number is it going? <laughs> yes. Dr. Jim Pritchett here on July 1st, 2017, Fairbanks, Alaska with my patient, veterinary surgeon Dr. D. Thornell, and she had a hip resourcing operation for a, a pretty difficult problem with her hip, and so we, we're describing what it's like to go through it. And one of the things that we've been doing the last, oh, 15 or so years is on our patients restricting the flexion after surgery. We didn't always do that. We tried a, a number of approaches, but she has what's called a superior approach into her hip, and uh, that's a muscle sparing approach done in the sideline position. And when we take the hip out of joint to work on it, we open the ligaments on the back of the hip, and so we repair them, and we want them to heal. We arbitrarily do the repair of these ligaments to heal at 90 degrees of flexion. We could make it anything we want, but that's the most convenient for sitting on an airplane or in a chair or a car seat. Or the bathroom. Or the bathroom too, yeah. And so we uh, ask patients to, to see if they can limit putting any pressure on that repair till it heals well for a few weeks. And uh, it's, it's worked out. Older patients for a regular hip replacement, we wouldn't feel so concerned about that. We'd, we'd let them just go through their progress, but that's helpful here because our hip resourcing patients often will just do anything they want after, which is the goal, of course, and that seems to be a, a good way to, to do it. So you kind of scared me, told me don't bend more than 90. Yeah, we he put a little... He scared me. <laughs> yeah. okay. I didn't do it. We do put a little fear in sometimes. It's fascinating that uh, Dr. D here is from Michigan, which turns out to... to be a real important uh, place in the history of hip resurfacing, at least the type she has. The very first hip resurfacing that was done that used a polymer for the socket was done in the state of Michigan. It was done in 1960 by Charles Townley. He used polyurethane for the polymer at that point. And it, it, um, it worked out only fair, uh, but it, he got the idea that it was a, a good, softer way to do the socket. He got the idea for polyurethane from Mike Mandarino in Philadelphia. And then later, it, polyethylene became the polymer, which it is today, and that's what Dr. D has. That's a good way to do a hip resurfacing. It's not the most popular way. It was done with metal in many other cases, which sometimes can be good, but, but a polymer hip resurfacing uh, is preferable, particularly for um, uh, women patients more more than any other. And so that's an interesting uh, little tie-in that uh, <laughs> her origin in, in Michigan to, to that, which was really key to me in, in the development of all this. Well, no, this man's my hero. <laughs> I was ready to shoot myself. My hip hurt so hurt bad. And I could tell when I woke up the day after surgery, that day, it was no pain, no pain. And so everybody has to get back up. This man can fix you and make you perfect again because <laughs> I'm doing it again. I'm out riding horses, driving horses, working all day long, flying planes, doing my squats, doing all that stuff with absolutely no pain. But that's up to you because this guy can fix you. <laughs> But you have to follow your instructions and make sure you keep your, your hip happy and healthy and keep working. Let's see if your new phone really works. <laughs>